Joining us right now is one of our favorites. He is calling this game uh, on the world feed, the international feed. Planet Earth will get the Super Bowl uh, if you speak English from this man and Charles Davis. He's also uh, the voice of the Brooklyn Nets. Perfect timing to have Ian Eagle back here on the Rich Eisen Show. How are you doing, Ian? Hey, we made it. Super Bowl week. We did. It's here. <laughs> happening. So how, Real. how does one prepare to speak to the world? How do you do that? Well, <laughs> it's a lot of pressure, Rich. I mean, I've got the entire world to think about yep. during this broadcast. Not America. Not the 48 contiguous states nope. in Alaska and Hawaii. Nope. The world. Yeah. The Philippines, Indonesia, mm -hmm. Israel, the United Kingdom. I could go on and on, but that's really all I've got. Do you take your boards to the United Nations and study there? Is that what you do? Maybe? Yeah. Ryan, is that what you yeah, do? Yeah, I like to get international studying in <laughs> and uh, really prepare for... For the world view yes. of the game. No, I don't I do not do anything different. I mm -mm. just show up. That's it. It's, well, it's, it's just like, you know, Hoosiers, right? The rim is still the same height from the floor. <laughs> you know? Yeah, it exactly doesn't. The like gym's Hoosiers. just bigger. The, the, the gym's yes, just bigger. That's we're, all. We're going to run the picket fence. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. All right. So your, your, uh, your opinion of this Super Bowl, um, having seen the Chiefs just recently, you saw them hoist the Hunt Trophy um, and beat the beat the Bengals. Your your two cents on on this game, Iron Eagle, that you're calling for the world? Yeah, had Philadelphia late in the year that Week 18 matchup against the Giants, where they just needed the win to seal the number one seed. Yes, uh, they were treating the game seriously, and it was Jalen Hurts coming back, which was a big part of it. Uh, we had talked to him about the shoulder issue, and there were reservations. He was not necessarily saying that he's 100% and and everything's full go. He was adjusting to the new normal. He's had some time since that. Obviously, we've seen them in the postseason and their two victories cruise to the Super Bowl. I just like their group. I like their confidence, what Lane Johnson has done to just be in there. Uh, that's inspirational. Their running game is for real. They've got big-time weapons on the outside in, in A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith. Goddard has proven himself as a reliable target. And then defensively, the, the fact that they can get to the quarterback nearly at a historic level, second only to the Chicago Bears from their Super Bowl year. The secondary makes plays. I, I like their team. I, I like how they've been built. Uh, they've been built the right way. It's been a nice mix. They put a lot of faith in Hurts, and he's proven them correct. Kansas City has uh, a certain confidence to them because they've been there. They've done it. They've got the experience. Mm -hmm. They have Andy Reid who can scheme it up. You give him an extra week to, to come up with some, some plans in the lab, and you know he'll have some funky stuff. I don't think they have the mystique they once had just based on the fact that Tyreek Hill isn't there. Some of their speed will not be a part of it with McCole Hardman placed on IR defensively. They came to play against Cincinnati. Chris Jones was tremendous. Frank Clark was excellent. They got a lot of pressure. Uh, they're banged up in the secondary, but they withstood it. My sense mm -hmm. is that Philadelphia has got a real belief, and I think they have the kind of squad that, that can win the whole thing. Yeah, they have, certainly have the type of squad to turn um, a somewhat compromised Mahomes uh, yeah. into the last time we saw Mahomes in the Super Bowl where he had a, a toe injury. Now, I mean, the ankle, uh, despite him looking hobbled, didn't uh, uh, when it all came down to it it did it did not hinder his ability to do the Mahomes type stuff but they certainly have the horses to chase Mahomes around like the Bucks did a couple of years ago Ian that's for sure they do yeah they do and and that did pop up in in my brain just trying to prepare for this and jotting some notes down this week CBS had that Super Bowl we worked on the pregame show I definitely was intoxicated by <laughs> Kansas City's offense Yes. And the fact that the Brady story at that time wasn't complete, and I thought it was a little bit of a pipe dream. Obviously, the way that game went, it uh, changed a lot of perceptions and changed uh, legacies to some degree. Mm -hmm. With that said, I think they downplayed the Mahomes injury that week leading up to the game. Here, there's nothing to hide. We saw it 
Uh, he had a tough time getting back to the sideline after series, and yet when it was time to go and time to do it, he could still sling it, and they protected him well enough. I just think this Philadelphia defense brings – a whole different dynamic getting to the quarterback, and, and that would concern me. When you, concern me. When you speak to Sirianni, what's he like? Um, is he anything close to the Sirianni we've seen on the sidelines where he's just saying it with his chest and just, you know, um, getting after it in a way that you don't see many NFL head coaches, Ian? No, no, not not in the production meetings. He's, he's a really likable dude. He's uh, very much a, a regular guy that – I think made good on this passion. He comes from a football family. His dad was a longtime coach. Brothers have been longtime coaches. So this has been in his blood forever. And he lives it. He breathes it. Uh, cares a lot. He's he's a very likable guy. I think he does become something else on the sideline. And there is a chip on the shoulder. And there's something that has fueled him through the years you've got the other angle which i'm sure will pop up quite a bit this week in some stories andy reed did not retain him he was on the kansas city coaching staff mm-hmm. and andy reed uh, has said hey he got very high marks but i had somebody else in mind for the job it all worked out for nick he ended up going to the chargers and then learning under frank reich and and that became a very important relationship in his football career but I'm sure that's something that's fueled him as well, deep, deep, deep down, that uh, he was in Kansas City and the new coaching regime led by Andy Reid didn't didn't want him to be a part of it. So whatever motivates you, I I think there are personas that pop up based on what we see on television, and I get it. That's often all we get for, for a lot of the fans. That's what they see, and that's what they base their opinion on. Nick is, is an affable dude and – and uh, yeah, really happy for him to, to accomplish this in two years, to, to take this and move it to a place where they can win a championship is is rather impressive. Ian Eagle calling into the Rich Eisen Show in advance of calling Super Bowl 57 for the world, the international feed. And we'll, uh, we'll return to that in a moment right here on the Rich Eisen Show. Uh, Ian, I know you've got a Nets hat there. Put it on. It's now time for you to put on your Brooklyn Nets hat. Hold on. Okay. Hold on, it's in the other room. Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Okay. So, okay. Yeah, I got it. Very okay. good. Very good. Uh, very, very short distance between rooms in your spot. Um, yeah, it's, I live in a small house. Okay. Um, what, the the Kyrie Irving era uh, in Brooklyn um, is summed up how? how? Sum it up for me. Uh, yeah. The Kyrie era is summed up in... Uh, high expectations and medium return. From a play-by-play man's point of view, Mm -hmm. it was a lot of fun. Fun to call his games. He is a basketball genius on the court. When he's healthy, when he's ready, when he's locked in, he is unpredictable on the floor where you don't know what he's going to do next and you got to be ready as an announcer, to go to a certain place that you may have not gone to before. But it's about results, and it's about availability. So for Kyrie, it was a grand total of 52% of the games that he could have appeared in, that he actually appeared in Mm. for the Nets. And I think ultimately that's why the decision was made. This was financial decision for Kyrie, uh, his last known power play where he could actually pull this off and say it and force a trade. Free agent at the end of the year, wanted four years, $198 million. Nets were not going to pay that. Uh, they tried to negotiate. That fourth year was was really the one that came into question, the guarantees involved. And I think they both hit a point of no return where they recognized that this wasn't going to work. So Kyrie takes his talents elsewhere, and the Nets now try to accumulate assets and see if they can make another move or two before the deadline on Thursday to try to put a supporting cast around Kevin Durant that can compete in the East and maybe win a championship. Well, again, I, I know this is a, a, a negative setup, uh, so I at least uh, admitting that. I mean, <laughs> Thank but you. did did the Thanks Nets? For letting me know. I know I'm kind of you know telegraphing my my shot here. Uh, did did the Nets win in spite of him? Or, be, you know, I, I know he's incredible. I know he's going to the Hall. 
I know when I take yeah. my kids to Springfield, Mass. One day they'll see his name and jersey and all, you know, all, all the baubles and and accolades from his career. And I know he'll deserve it. But it just seems to me that there's always something else with him. And this is now the second consecutive. You could make it three if you want to include Cleveland, although he departed from there himself. It, it just seemed that he, he's left places just saying, get out twice now in a row. Yeah, it's oh, yeah. a legitimate question. And it's a great question because I think the Nets have had to try to do some soul searching over the last several months, not just the last several days on what the future is going to look like and the distractions that, that come with it. He's a gifted player, and he really was on his best behavior after the suspension. And, and that doesn't go away, by the way. It's not like, oh, well, that never happened. It happened. It's part of a long list of issues that took place where Kyrie was not a participant. And I think the Nets had to weigh all of that. Now, with all of that said, they also had to balance out how KD would react to this. And we still don't know that answer. We don't know if Kevin Durant is, quote-unquote, on board or understanding in what just took place, that the Nets had to make this move. It was, it was untenable, and it was irreparable. There was no going back. The Durant situation during the offseason, the Nets always felt if they could sit down with them, if they could speak, if they could communicate, if they could share their vision, they would be able to convince him that Brooklyn was the place to be, at least for now. I think they got to a point with Kyrie that they were no longer having those kind of rational discussions with him and his camp, and that's why this deal happened. Are they better off without him? Uh, clearly, they decided not to pay the four years $198 million, and the decision was made to move on without him and go in a different direction for the franchise. So that's their belief. Ian Eagle, uh, I appreciate you calling in before a, a big week. Um, and just because I, I'm appreciative uh, of that, um, I, I want to leave you uh, with with uh, a couple of things here. Number one is uh, the, a storyline. I don't know if you're aware, the Kelsey uh, brothers are playing in this game. Um, so yeah. make a note of that, Jason and Travis, uh, if you want to just put it on your, your note Noted. pad, um, <laughs> there's yeah, that. that a highlighter. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and I want to leave you with something for the world feed as well. And, 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 and because I'm such a giver, I think it, it is, in a way, through you being the conduit, giving something to the world, um, Ian. And that is, yeah. you know, uh, calling this game internationally, uh, not with, for any network, not for CBS, your, your, your home network, um, I'm imagining there are not any show promos for you to read which you're you're outstanding no, at no there are not right no. okay so no, no and that's a strange place for me i mean i'm accustomed <laughs> to bob hart's abishola <laughs> ghosts mm -hmm. all of the cbs paramount plus programming yes sir yeah it's weird it's a weird weird space for me to be and not to have those promos well let me fill that void for you and i appreciate you mentioning your streaming partner because the roku channel streams this program <laughs> it's you're also a 21st century guy uh we have cool. on the rich eisen show created three shows um cool. and uh i believe we sent you the copy so you can read them um and Amazing. and and i think we maybe should just choose the best one uh and see if we can spring it on the international audience Ian. yeah i i haven't seen these rich so okay. this is a rip and read situation okay. that, that i find myself in but i okay. feel very experienced in this space I know it. and i'm ready if you're ready i am ready go for it Ian eagle this is uh a t fake tv promo number one for the international feed of super bowl 57 go for it they said his international court had no jurisdiction. But tell that to the oligarchs he's put behind bars. And strong men around the world certainly know his brand of justice is bringing the fight to them. David Caruso is back in CSI, The Hague. <laughs> We've got him in a wig on the screen for you, Ian. Okay, there you go, CSI, The Hague. Very good. People will learn what the Hague is if they already don't. All right, here's uh, fake TV promo number two. <laughs> Ian Eagle, go for it. I like this one. Go for it. She's a late-night sketch comedy star. He discovered the theory of relativity. Together, they're trying oh, to find love and better cell reception. <laughs> Cicely Strong and Paul Giamatti star in the new hit romantic comedy, How I Met Your Genius. <laughs> 
I think he's got the bike on the screen there. He's got his bike. Brilliant. She's, she's very Brilliant. excited. Okay, there's the last one. Go for it. Kaput. Go for it, Iron. Go for it. They found the fountain of youth, but sadly, time ran out. Now, they're coming back to life just to see the greatest of all time play in one last Super Bowl. The spirit ghosts of Wilford Brimley, Jessica Tandy, Hume Cronin, and Steve Gutenberg's career. Headline an all-star cast in Cocoon 4 for Brady. <laughs> Is that the spot where he retired? That's the spot where he retired. Yeah, Smitch, Smitch put the dunes behind That's him right there. It's, very, it's, it's Florida. All right, so which one do you like best, Ian? Which one do you think is good? Which one works? Boy, I mean, <laughs> all three are very enticing. Uh, I I want to apologize to the Goot, of course, Steve Gutenberg. Sacker, I he took in right now. He took just, strays. He got, yeah, he got, he got shrapnel. There was no, there was no reason for that. I... I personally, yeah, I'm a big Cecily Strong yep. and Paul Giamatti fan. Yep. 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 I want to see if the sparks from the commercials <laughs> spill over. I would want to watch How I Met Your Genius. How I Met Your Genius. <laughs> All right, let's see if we could sneak that in, and then of course, let's pitch it around town. Let's see how it works. <laughs> done, done deal. <laughs> Take care of yourself, Ian. Have a great cast. I hope to see you in Arizona. Thanks for the call. All right, you're the best. Be right back Hello, at you. Hello, Cuba. Get ready. <laughs> I want to hear from you. <laughs> <laughs> Costa Rica. Thanks. Altoona, come on. Get down here. <laughs> you say Altoona? Uh, you did say Altoona. It's Altoona. TJ's hometown. Take care, Ian. We'll see you soon. See you, Ian. There you go. There's Ian Eagle, everybody. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free. 